So here we go. That'll give you an idea of the conditions. Stafford wins it straight down to Paul Williams. A high kick up towards right half forward. Getting one hand to it was Jason Wilde. That wasn't enough. It's pushed wide. Past Kelly. He tried to sock it out of the hands. Couldn't do so. On the outer wing. Creswell an opportunity. Gets the hand pass away. Now it's Sydney going into attack. Down towards Seymour. Lockett is there also. Lockett at the back. Seymour's there. Pushed wide towards Lockett. He can't take it. Suck it off the ground by O'Brien as O'Brien and Lockett come back into the forward line. And it is a throw-in. Sandy just at the end of the ground there. Uh, Tony Lockett, Mark Richardson's got him. And Dunkley with Severio Rocker at the other end. Dipper, the bench. Uh, for Collingwood, Matthew Francis, Shane Watson and Scott Crow. Here's Brown getting the hand pass away to Russell. He goes towards Monkhurst. A little too far for him, but marked by Stafford in the middle of the ground. It's going to be a key duel, isn't it? Stafford and Monkhurst. Stafford, Lockett's the target at centre half for Brown front spot, the brave one, Orchard against his old team round the body, Richardson gets a good bounce, he's had a pretty good season, slow handball over the top but he waited it perfectly to Armat, Armat chips to Monkhorst and the big monkey's got it at centre wing, comes inside to Wild, Wild a little one to Russell, Russell's handball okay over the top to Curran, this could hurt, goes to full forward, too far for Rocker, Osborne and McPherson, Osborne works towards the pocket free kick, holding Hanging on. As you called it, Bruce holding the ball, holding man, sorry. Gee, they'll know a bit about each other, Osborne and Ruse, I know they're not standing one another, but uh, haven't they played a bit of footy together over the years, and now opposed, late in their careers. Osborne clearly held without the ball there. Well, he's been an interesting pick-up, he's kicked seven goals in five games going in, Kicked three at Victoria Park when they were vital against Adelaide when Collingwood won by a point. Saw him early in the year when he kicked rather poorly, but this is a big kick early days for Osborne to get him off to a flying start. The Rocker brothers have been potent up forward along with Paul Williams, and Osborne playing a minor role. He's kicked the ball well. He's got it. Now that's a dream start for the 32-year-old, and the Magpies get the first. Well, no doubt about that, Bruce. I mean, Richard Osborne really has given an alternative forward venue to the Collingwood side. They've got Anthony lining up centre-half forward, Severio in the full forward position, and then Richard Osborne with a little bit of a, a licence across the forward pocket, half-forward line to get around. He needs quick, and he's very, very uh, accurate kick, and so that's just the start they were looking for without any doubt at all. Back in the middle. Thrown up once again, Stafford this time doesn't get the knock he wanted, but O'Loughlin takes the football, down towards the half-forward line, Seymour gets the hand pass away, back to Dyson, coming back into this lineup for Sydney, Kevin Dyson nearing a major milestone, goes down towards half-forward, Carey applies a good tackle, Creswell pounces in on the ball a little late, socket to wide. Kelly gives chase, he always does, Williams also, tries to sock it away from O'Loughlin, he misses, Richardson in trouble, this is the good early pressure we expected, Graham writes away on the outer side, up towards Robbie Armat, in fact over his head, and marked by Buckley. That's a big ask of John Stevens, isn't it, take Buckley on in this stage of the game? Into the pocket of Anthony Rocker, who will no doubt receive a cool reception from many of the fans here tonight, those wearing the red and white in particular, a cool night also. With the current temperature of 15, expected to drop to 12. Maybe uh, the odd shower. There have been a few of those this afternoon already. Stafford pushed into it by Monkhorst, who eventually did get the bounce. Lewis goes over the line on the four. Sandy, that stafford Monkhurst duel will be very, very important to the outcome. I think, uh, last year up here, it was Stafford's work on Monkhurst that really put them into position. Now, this man is capable of kicking amazing goals whether off the ground or in the air. Let's see what he does this time. Robbie Armat. The angle doesn't get much tighter. Doesn't even try and bend. It goes right across the face towards Severio Rocker. Belted out of his hands and Paul Roos should push it away for Sydney. Towards the half-back line. Not far enough, however. It's Krasiska who pushes back again this time. Captain Courageous, Paul Kelly. Pushes a wide to Stafford. Gee, Kelly and Buckley, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? The two favourites for the Brownlow medal out there tonight. Stafford, beautiful kick. And the Swans are away at half-back. Stevens, who, uh, as Terry said a moment ago, has got the uh, huge job on Buckley early. Beautiful kick to Kerry, who was their only winner last week up forward against uh, the Crows. Kerry in board. Danger here, though. Could be cut off. Burns against Creswell. This could be a turnover against the Swans. They do a good job here. And Creswell measures the kick beautifully to O'Brien. Front spot, not paid. 
ground on him and quickly recovers and comes away with a good handle. Williams straightens the body and kicks it beautifully to Rocker. And he could goal from here. I know he's 55 out. 50 metre penalty, well, Bruce. He can goal from there. No doubt about that. He had some hope where he was. And now he is going to kick the second goal of the match. And Seymour gives Sav one and might get another 50. Yep, gets another one. Well, he the, can walk up to the line and dribble it over. The reason the first 50 metre penalty was paid was because Creswell knocked him to the ground after he'd taken the mark. Um, we we'll may get another look at it. The second one, mark is taken. Creswell just bowls him over. He's got it, Anthony. Well, he's kept his record up. He's kicked a goal in at least every match this year. And this is not the start the Swans wanted, but just right for the Magpies. No, the disappointing part there is just the actual discipline. Uh, I think it was, was it Brad Seymour there, the boy that overstepped the mark. And to do it, do it once, that's not good. But then to go and do it twice, because on his way back, he just barged through Severio Rocker there now. So Stevens has been able to swap over there. The work now being done by Seymour and Buckley. But that just undisciplined, and he won't be happy. Bit going on off the ball too with Maxfield and also Wild. The play goes on out of the centre, namely with Williams. Paul Williams has had an excellent season. Curran in towards half forward. Buckley tried to swipe it further afield, but it goes the other way. Passed right back towards Big Monkey. He's beaten for it by Carey, who gives it off to his captain. Looks down towards the forward line. Lockett and O'Brien, the target. Lockett over the top, but way too early. O'Brien at the back. As Hell looks for the free kick. It's going to come back, though. It'll be a Collingwood free kick with Tony Lockett. Unreal. Away. Sandy, an unrealistic attempt to mark by uh, Tony Lockett, so the free kick was paid for marking interference. Well, ambitious anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Brown. To the half-back line, courageous mark taken by Shawville. Almost down to centre wing. Good start by Collingwood if you've just tuned in. They've kicked a couple of early goals. Monkhorst on the de defensive side of centre. Swings it up towards half-forward. Buckley was the one he was targeting, but it was Scotty Doreen who intercepted oh. across to Shannon Grant, smothered. Patterson a chance. 60 metres out is the former red leg. Almost to 50. Wobbles one in towards full forward. Bounces to Robbie Armat. Armat can give the hand pass away. This should be a goal to Anthony Rocker, but it doesn't make the distance mark on the last line of defence. Robbie Armat really had the chance then to nail it himself, I thought. Should have had a shot. Yep. Oh, Lachlan Maxfield had to wait for it a bit. Then bangs it beautifully to Lachlan. That's a great kick. Gives him a chance. Free kick O'Brien. Hanging on against Brown. So, just in this little piece, Bruce, uh, Craig O'Brien has shown that he's getting off the mark quicker than Gavin Brown can go with him. The last two times they've been forward, he's had the uh, upper hand and this time been rewarded with the free kick. Interesting matchup. Brown much taller, better in the air than O'Brien, but O'Brien a real danger man. He's a bit all or nothing, isn't he? He's a five goal man or not much at all and he's given that a big hook. Now, lock it, get back here. One out, why not? Of course he'll beat Richardson 7 or 8 out of 10, one out in a situation like that. And it was just two one out, wasn't it? So, I mean, there was no way Sydney, a big player from the Sydney side, was going to go down there and clutter it up. But why couldn't a Collingwood player to get back and add some assistance there to Richardson? One out against Tony Lockett. It's going to be a long night for Mark Richardson. Well, the champ should kick it. The angle's tight, but he's clever enough and good enough. He improves the angle and hooks it. And I think he's missed. Yeah, Collingwood uh, midfielders really have to be conscious of being able to get back, push back, whether it's Monkhurst going back or some release for Schwarbel from the centre-half back to be the first man to get back there, but they need to be able to give support there, definitely. Richardson to bring it back into play. Quite sure we'll see Buckley doing a considerable amount of work later on the evening. Krasiska tries to slap it over the back. There's a free kick. In fact, the advantage is going to be paid. Kelly takes the hand pass, but he's still outside 50. He's forced to chip along that 50-metre line, and O'Brien will get another chance to go forward. Free kick to Maxfield was cancelled, Sandy. He looks down towards Lockett. Creswell is there, and then goes backwards to Dyson. Game number 99 for Kevin Dyson. Into full forward, Richardson, Monkhorst, they give it away and now they combine. An opportunity for Burns to set something up to Buckley, 60 metres out, 50 now, 45, he shoots in towards goal, normally deadly accurate is the master kicker.
Well, when you've got the skills like that, you don't mess around. That was a perfect work there from out of the defence to find Buckley with that, just that touch of space, and away he goes, and being able to settle there. A good exchange here. Burns working well across half back line, out here and. Armat had the opportunity, perhaps then he should have immediately, and he just does it there, you see it there, where he drops him behind, does the right thing to Shepard, because he knew he had the best kicker in the side, having a shot at goal. Three goals, Collingwood, Sydney just the behind. Buckley, beautiful goal on the run. Seymour well away from him. So they've exposed that situation, Collingwood, Williams away, bangs to fall forward, Rock has got it. Great kick, beautiful grab. The machine's well oiled early. Ominous signs. Rocker from the pocket. It's a beautiful kick by Williams. When well, you got Williams and Buckley and uh, Scotty Russell, I mean, when they're on fire through the middle of Collingwood side, which is to play full forward, would be a great honour. He's had a good start to this season. Tremendous early with a 6 and 10 in the opening two weeks. Five last week. He's kicked it well. He's pretty happy. It's another one. Sav's got one. Anthony's got one. Nathan's got one. Richard's got one. Collingwood's got four. Well, this is just a classical stuff here. Williams given just that little bit of latitude there from O'Loughlin. O'Loughlin wasn't tight enough. And the break, well, you'd say, well, maybe too close into the pocket there. But it is a shorter ground. And when you're a long leader like Sav is, you are tending to go a little bit wider on this ground here, but he did well. Lee Walker, what a start. Yeah, it's uh, certainly the start that we were after. And, uh, you know, I mean, we started like this uh, last year when we played the Swans in the first early rounds. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can keep going from here because it's looking great for us. Bernie Lee, the Monkhorst actually tried to take it out of the air and win it down to the half forward line. Williams again, this time he gets caught. It spills free and Sydney lock it up with Dale Lewis and Co. coming in over the top. But an exciting start by the Magpies. And Sandy, for Rodney E, this is a tough time. He spent all week developing his game plans, getting his players well matched up, and he's under pressure just at the moment. I think he will stick with what he designed during the week and just ride this rough period through. It's inside Collingwood's 50 almost. Williams again, look at him, he's fierce at the ball, just putting pressure on all the time. Shannon Grant feels that pressure, but he does get a kick down towards uh, the middle of the ground. Stevens is there with Grosiska, beaten for it, however, and Buckley around the body again to Williams. Talk about Brownlow medal fray, Richard also have to say Paul Williams is in that group as well. He's had such a wonderful start to the season. They'll take notes from each other up towards Rocker territory. No one able to take the mark, and it's pushed towards the line and over. For a throw in in Collingwood's right forward pocket. Some great work on the full forward line there off screen. That uh, Anthony Rocker, Severio Rocker and Richard Osmond all giving wide and clearly different leads there to Williams. He was able to make a good choice. Stafford again with Big Monkey. The latter tries to belt it over the back. He's unsuccessful. Stafford gets another kick now. Lockwood may get there in time. He'll be beaten by Buckley. Nathan Buckley onto the left foot. Goes in towards the pocket. Shannon Grant got a hand to it. Quite happy to see it over for another throw in. but under siege early. Terrific crowd here, official sellout. Must be about 40,000 again like it was against Carlton. A bit stunned a few of the people here. Collingwood have uh, great support around Australia. They have a few voices here as well. Grant bangs at the half back, but Collingwood are reading it beautifully. Russell, left foot in board. Look at the numbers. He had two to choose from. Graham Wright and Robbie Armack could have waxed it. And Wright was in the uh, right spot at the right time. Righto. Thank you. <laughs> Good kick, wasn't it? it? It was, and it was to the perfect spot. I mean, uh, this little ground, you are forced wide more often than not. So to be disciplined and bring it back into centre half forward, very good thinking. Well, Collingwood's accuracy in the first quarter this year has been remarkable throughout the season. Remember how they started? Or oh, they've missed one. They are. 4 1. You give them a wrap every time, that's what happens. But yes. Well, they started with 11 straight or something yeah. against Port Adelaide, and generally they've been very accurate early. 4-1 to a behind. There's a long way to go in this game, but it's the right start if you're a Magpie fan right around Australia. Yes, as we saw in that picture, Severo Rocker's got his fans, be they in Melbourne or Sydney. There's brother Anthony flying, but beaten. That's a good mark by the Sydney number one big man. Big job for him tonight. Stafford on half-back. 
And it's long and low, up towards uh, the half forward line. It appear to be uh, just Collingwood players having all the numbers at the moment. Donald finds uh, Williams, he tries to go towards centre wing. Kelly leading by example, as he always does, gets the hand pass out. They're squabbling over it. It will be a slippery ball with the amount of rain that's fallen during the week. Shannon Grant went in, couldn't come out with the football. So to Maxfield, who whips out the hand pass. Now maybe they can get something going down towards left half forward, although the ball will spin towards the line and be taken over by Andrew Schäuble for another throw in. Yeah, Paul Kelly really is going to be the catalyst of the side coming back into the game, but it's not going to be easy for him. Chrissy Curran's his direct opponent, and Curran has some big scalps in league football. He's done well this season. Here's the throw in again. Just tapped over the top by Jason Wilde, gained 15 or 20 metres, then Brad Seymour takes it over. Sydney has a marvellous record here in recent times. They haven't lost in the last 14. Deverk, thoughts on uh, Nathan Buckley? Yes, so Michael uh, Lachlan's now got the job on Buckley, uh, uh, 12 minutes into the first quarter, and John Stevens has now gone back to the wing. Just past the wing area now, up towards uh, right half forward. Oh, Lachlan shows dash comes away for Sydney, up towards Stephen, speak of the devil, Stuart Maxfield also punched it towards the line and they slide over towards it, another throw in. Mind you, you talk about records, Collingwood's recent record against Sydney is very good in their last ten meetings, Collingwood have won eight of those and they've made a very positive start tonight. Four early goals, Moncourse and Carey, it's half forward left for the Swans, they need one here. Shawball's quick kick, out towards centre wing, Orchard, wouldn't he love a victory here against the Magpies? Mrs. Doreen is having his first match for the season, looked a bit rusty there, arm out away, Rennie's full measure, not a great kick, Rocker attacks it beautifully, takes a man on but had it whipped away, Doreen, well done, squeezes it out, the kick to set a half forward, no numbers again as Sandy mentioned a moment ago for the Swans, they seem to be outnumbered wherever the ball is, Curran's kick wide, Williams has some space, watch for him to deliver if he can balance up now, he's got Patterson short, doesn't quite get him but got a good bounce, Patterson inside, kicks to set a half forward, Rock of the target, Duckley with him, man on man. Well played, Duckley. Belts it away, goes to McDonald. McDonald kicks from 45, hooks it and misses. It's a behind. It's 4 2, Collingwood 26, Sydney. Just that one behind from Tony Lockett. Bruce, one of the most impressive parts of Collingwood this year is they've really tightened up their defence. So when last year they were rated number 13 in the competition in terms of average scores against them, this year they're rating third in the competition and, and that's the sort of quality that a side needs to go well in finals football. Graham Wright, a big fly from behind to affect the spoil from Longhorst to Osborne. He's well outside 50 now, heads towards that line now. O'Loughlin will come over the top and take the mark. Plays on with Dash, wobbling a punt kick up towards centre wing where it spins over the line. Tony Shaw would be happy with this start, but I wonder what he thinks about uh, playing on this smaller ground. We uh, trained on the dimensions that we were given from the Sydney Cricket Ground. I hope they're right, but uh, we just marked it out inside our own ground and uh, all our drills have been uh, you know, placed on that ground and, and we've run everything exactly the same, so hopefully it might help us when we get there. Stewie Maxfield almost running into his captain there. But he's OK, Paul Kelly, as you would expect. Monkhorst again, this time wins it. Flipped over the top towards Wright and Osborne. They combine and the latter kicks up towards the 50. We're inside Rocker territory once again, but there's a good mark taken by Stafford. Second good mark he's taken in defence. He swings away to the outer side as Paul Ruse has Michael O'Loughlin running with him. Stafford carries down towards half forward. They can go here and maybe set something up. Carey into Locker. Can't quite take it on the half ball. He picks himself up quickly, but would be disappointed with that delivery. He was stretched out. And there will be a throw-in. Yeah, I, I think the choice was an incorrect one, whether he was able to come back yep. in board or even just the short kick to Paul Kelly, yep. who, with more agility, would have been able to step around and run on into goal. Stafford's going to be so important at the back to try and cut the rockers off. He was good then. Creswell's handball. 
wanting Lewis now. Lewis, long handball out. Now, can they get it to Ruse? Well done by Creswell. Ruse faints one, then comes back to Dyson. Bit of a hot ball. He did all right, Dyson. Lock at front spot. Good stretch by Richardson at the back. Brown's hands were good. Russell's hands were excellent. Collingwood's so sure at the back and so calm under pressure. And they find Monkos and he switches it wide to right, right on the run. Graham Wright has a look down towards the forward line. And pinpoint accuracy once again. This has been a feature of Collingwood and Buckley. Will have no trouble with the distance. Yeah, Stafford dropping back to half back, then really got caught out. Didn't know whether he was going to half back to cut this one off or go back further to cut off Severo Rocker. In the end, just caught in no man's land. Came into the game with six goals, six to his name for the season. He's usually dead I think. It was touched off the boot, that ball. It'll be a behind. He was accurate enough. Well, isn't it rare that you see that sort of thing from a player like him when all junior football, any footballer, really, you need to get back, give yourself plenty of room because that's a cardinal sin on that occasion. Doreen Brack brings it back into Paul Ruse, who's tucked in the back pocket. But Colin would have done the bulk of the attacking in this first quarter. Carey in the middle of the pack, trying to affect the spoil. Russell wanting someone going past. Maxville, that was very deliberate towards the boundary line and over. Throw in on the outer side. Packed house here at the SCG. It is rocking tonight. But Sydney fans would like a few goals to really get it going. Stafford again. The big man has a big ask tonight. But he started well. Just structurally there, Rodney. Just a, a move late in this quarter. Paul Kelly has just dropped off the ball round to half forward. And O'Brien has wandered into taking a more important role in the midfield. Kick goals, didn't he, uh, Kelly, early in the year against Hawthorne. On Saturday night, got four. He's been trying to get some goals out of his champ. Let's hope, uh, from Sydney's point of view, he might get one late in this term. Creswell had that knee problem. But Back, Cre by fan. Yeah, Creswell just depicts one of the deficiencies just at the moment. He's, he's their leading tackler. But Rodney Eder said during the week that he feels that's the part of the game they're missing just at the moment. They're not hard enough and tackling well enough inside the contest. O'Loughlin had time. He's getting a few kicks, O'Loughlin. Centre wing. Stevens burns with him. Stevens with that pace comes around. Rifle kick, not bad. Seymour made it. That was better. Seymour at 50. O'Brien goes. Lockett decides not to go. Now goes to the pocket. He pops it up. Gives Richardson a chance. Lockett front spot. Somebody's got to be uh, on the bottom there. A rover to try and get something off that. But away Patterson and Monkhorst again. So that's a couple of times. In the last two or three minutes, the Maggies have come out of defence and found Monkhorst cut off, though, in the centre by Chapman, who's just come onto the ground. I think it's time for young Troy Cook to come on the ground for Sydney. Just give him a little bite around the forward line, a smaller player underneath Locker. Good kick, Ruse gets to Lewis at centre wing. The other interesting thing, Bruce, is that the delivery of the ball to Lockett is really testing out the big man's fitness early on in this game. Down towards right half forward, Doreen was the target, was pushed by Alex McDonald over the line for another throw in. Great start by the Magpies, holding Sydney goalless so far in this first quarter. Shawble doing the ruck work, Creswell at the back, down on all fours, Dyson heads towards the boundary line once again. Ideally he would have liked it to go four or five metres further. Picked up and kept in play by Karen to centre wing, Lewis. Has a look up towards half forward and pinpoints Carey. Still a long way from home, Stefan. Here comes Locker. Charging out this time. He's smack bang in front and 40 out. Well, Stephen Carey really is going to be an important player, whether it's getting back to block a hole in the half-forward line of Collingwood or drifting on into his own team's half-forward line. I've seen him a couple of times, and he's shown to be a very astute ruckman, been, being un understanding how to be in the right spot at the right time. On that occasion, he did it well and finished it off with a great pass. Seems strange. Here we are, almost at the halfway mark of the home and away, and Tony Lockett, seven goals to his name. But, of course, injuries have taken their toll in the pre-season and early on. Let's see if he can convert this one and get Sydney on the board. Trailing at the moment by 26 points. 
That deliberate approach we've come to know so well. The red and white army goes up and Sydney get there first. Tony Lockett gets his first. And we're back to a 20-point ball game. Well, if you're looking for somebody to get the first goal and somebody whom could have an influence upon all the teammates and upon the crowd, this was the man that you wanted to get it. And uh, Tony Lockett did it. If, he can, if the midfielders can get the ball to him, sometimes he's been pushed a little wide. Kicks haven't been good, but if they can hit him, I think he'll do a good job for him here tonight. Mighty roar here now after Sydney get its first goal. 1-1 one, one to 4-3. Collingwood still in control early, but uh, better signs a moment ago. From the Swans' point of view, though, Patterson belts it to Rocker. Rocker's leading to that pocket, so there's a bit of a plan there when the uh, midfield has come out. We saw Williams a moment ago. Dunkley over the line. Gee, what a job full-backs get in this competition, week in and week out. Don't they cop some great players to play on? You'd wonder when they sleep. Modra last week. This week, Rocker. Fortunately and unfortunately, no Ablett or Dunstall for the moment. Certainly unfortunately from the game's point of view, but maybe the full-backs are happy. Kelly, clever. Very clever to Lewis. Lewis has kicked to centre wing. Shawbel and Carey. Carey just put a bit of pressure on him. Well played because Buckley was there well oh. as well. And out of play. That's a good result for the Swans after that. Bruce, just on that fullback position, the Collingwood fullback position is a, is a little bit of a concern. I mean, in two of their losses, you know, Mallington's kicked goals against them, and then Simon Mitten Connell picked up goals as well. Uh, if Lockett's on form, it could be a bag here, and so that's just the one spot that I think there's a little bit of a chink in the Collingwood armour at the moment. Maxfield feeling the heat, but uh, it's going to be okay because his teammate Greg Stafford is going to be given the free kick. Incorrect disposal, Sandy throwing the footy, and Stafford. Goes up towards left half forward. And now that loved one here just before the siren to stay closely in touch. Collingwood bodies over the ball, try and lock it up. Look at Gavin Krasiska over the top there. Another ball up on left half forward. Pretty miserly this Collingwood defence. Carey does the right work, he was down, looking towards Kelly. Kelly goes again, just tries to flick it back to accommodate Stuart Maxfield. He's forced over the line. Maxfield's been uh, quiet, he had, what is it, one kick, one handball to date. And he's one of the players who, who in that midfield really can catalyse something up for the Sydney Swans. You can see there he's got the job on Scotty Russell. And in that bracket of players now, played around the 120 games. A senior player and uh, one who should lead by example. Stevens towards Stafford. Stafford's left foot kick, and he travels 15 or 20 metres. Now here's an opportunity, floating up towards Lockett. He comes steaming out, can't quite take it on the first bounce. Goes again, under pressure from Richardson. Shot wide towards Scotty Russell. Russell gets it clear to Burns. He goes up towards the middle of the ground, but it's a free kick. Free kick for a high tackle paid uh, downfield to Collingwood. It's going to and report him on that. Tony Lockett has been reported, I think. We'll get confirmation of that with Dipper at quarter time, but it certainly looked like that. And Scotty Burns, the other player involved, Sandy. The expression on Tony Lockett's face would suggest that he has been. Well, oh, what a critical stage, too, because Sydney were in attack, had a chance of scoring. Now, this could almost be construed as a two-goal turnaround. Osborne from 42 metres. It's a drop punt for Collingwood. It looks very good off the boot, and Aussie has kicked the goal. And a nasty one as far as Sydney are concerned and still O'Brien and co just having a chat with Tony Lockett saying take it easy cool down yeah, yeah. body language is a lot John and he uh, didn't really happy with that one did he Tony? and you could tell by the way Craig O'Brien approached him that he was just trying to simmer him down and make sure that he didn't get too frustrated with the way the ball was being re rebounded out of their uh, their forward line so easily Knows how to kick a goal on this ground, doesn't he, Aussie? And he's got a couple so far tonight. So it's 5-1. to one. Stafford out of the centre. Chapman's little give, but didn't get to Kelly. Cut off by Russell. Back to centre half forward. Late in this opening term. O'Loughlin caught. 
Did he have an opportunity? Play on. Dyson's quick kick back to centre half forward though for the Swans. Shawpool courageous as he so often is. Pushes wide to Williams. Can Collingwood set up a late goal here? Williams away. Kicks to half forward. Buckley with his fourth opponent for the opening term. That's Lewis. Stow, then Seymour on Buckley, McDonald round the body, Lachlan goes hard at it with him, Patterson, Ruse goes to ground, Anthony Rock, hip and shoulder by Dunkley was affected, taken by Dyson, he wants the boundary line and gets it, and it'll be a boundary throw in. And that's it, it's quarter time at the SCG, an explosive opening term, we believe Tony Lockett has been reported, Collingwood got off to a flying start, some confusion here. There's Lockett. He's kicked 1-1. One, one. He's kicked the Sydney score so far, but almost certainly has been reported for that incident about two or three minutes ago, which finally led to Richard Osborne's second goal. But at this stage, it's Collingwood in control. They're 5-1. to one. Well, a perfect start, wasn't it? The way they went, and uh, Rodney Eade really has a lot of work to do at quarter time. Indeed he does. Collingwood, 5-3, 33, Sydney, a 1-1-7. So Brian Sheehan will set the wheels in motion for the second quarter here at the SCG. Collingwood in the box seat, 5-3, plays 1-1. The big monkey tries to pluck it out of the air, but it's knocked off the ground by Maxfield. Down towards the half-forward line, Carey gets it away to Creswell. He pumps it high towards Lockett, got one hand to it. Going to be a free kick to the big man. Stewie Wynn signalling that uh, Lockett was held by the arm in the marking contest, so free kick paid for holding him without having the footy. Well, let's just test John out here now. Yeah, it was earlier than that, Terry. It, yep. Stewie Wynn actually signalling the arm in the corner of the screen just there. Big celebration to the umpire's camp tonight too, with Greg Scroop's wife giving birth to a baby 20 minutes before he hopped on the plane. <laughs> he wouldn't miss this, miss this game for anything. But congratulations to Greg. Now let's see what Tony Lockett can do. This for his and Sydney's second goal. This for a flying start in the second quarter. 30 metres out. And that is good. Well, that will help him after having the number four put down in the book. Well, there's no problem when he gets it. It was interesting during the week after... Uh... Quentin Leach kicked a goal after the siren to win the game. A number of football coaches were asked who you'd like or who's been the straightest kick you've seen. And the number of people who rated Tony Lockett highly uh, was quite incredible. He has a very good technique. He approaches the ball, runs straight, follows through straight. So uh, if the Swans can get it to him, he may kick his eight tonight. He's kicked the whole score so far. I know it's a bit miserly, 2-1, but it's promising at least. So just three goals. Stafford took a while to get it out, Monkhorst wide, Osborne's been good, a couple of early goals, he'd be delighted with that, Seymour can sit on him a bit here, Daz played it well, out of play, right in front of the seven commentary position, we have got the best view here, imaginable high in the stand, looking down on this ground, a packed arena and a great night for football and a real contest now, 5-3-2-1 Sydney has kicked two of the last three goals Collingwood got away to a fly and things have been pretty even for about 15 minutes. It's just whether they can get it back on the board. Stevens good to Kelly to lock it now. Over the top, who's back there? Can O'Brien beat Brown for it? Brown will concede. Yes, a behind. But it was a good positive attack. Stevens handball to Kelly was excellent and it was penetrating the kick. So 2-2 two, two to 5-3. A little bit of a stickler here. I'd just like to see a little bit more leg speed in that uh, Sydney forward line. Uh, Craig O'Brien and Tony Lockett, they just need someone else there amongst them. Uh, I know Jamie Lawson was a long time ago, but somebody like that, and maybe young Troy Cook still is that person. Richardson brings it back into play. He was heading towards Prasiska, who could have almost given away the free kick, but Doreen takes it and maybe played the advantage. Up towards half forward. Shawball belts it clear. Shannon Grant gives chase. Chapman is there also. Williams for Collingwood. He's got to beat a couple of them. Chapman is through, puts it hurriedly onto the boot. Only as far as Patterson, who marks on centre wing. Patterson. Penetrating kick towards Anthony Rocker. Ruse is there with him. Seymour to tidy up at the back. Gives it off to O'Loughlin. He looks further downfield. Wider towards the wing. Doreen and Creswell. Both there. So too Shannon Grant. They combine. Up towards right half forward. Stephen Carey the target. Francisco in the way. The veteran from Collingwood. Ten year player. And has been an excellent servant of the club. To put them into attack. So from half back Francisco. 
Goes long, gets to half forward. McDonald there with Stevens. Maxfield and Wild together. And it's going to be a throw up. Yeah, thank you, Bruce. I should have picked it with that white Guernsey there, but Mark Bay's out there now uh, playing across half forward. Krasiska, his direct opponent. Tough one for Bay's. His side's not going well, and Krasiska has run into some good form in the first quarter. Brian Sheehan, Greg Scroop, and Stuart win the umpires. 9 21 and 22, respectively. 5 3 to 2 2. Collingwood by 19 points. Monkhorst and Stafford. Now wild around the body. High kick. Not going far. Probably called play on here. Monkhorst. No, he's been paid it. Well, must have covered 10 metres. Certainly, uh, Scroop thought it did anyway. Yep. Monkhorst to Armat. Armat about 60 metres out. He's normally constructive. Kicks the ball to the goal square. Collingwood with a chance with Rocker. Duckley front spot. Well played, Seymour, because Wild was there and Seymour conceded. And Lee Matthews, if you're watching at home, you'll be pleased again because he's really working on these rush behinds. He's got a theory, and we're going to hear about it on Talking Footy pretty soon, I can tell you. <laughs> you're making sure we go here now. Back into play, Dyson. Talking Footy, of course, with Bruce Lee and Mike. Every Monday night, just check your local guides. Lewis on the outer side. He was off. And he knows it. Plays on now, going over the top to Paul Ruse. On centre wing. A chip up towards his captain. And he takes the mark. And he's off. 70 metres out. Kelly's kick towards Lockett. He's the meat in the sandwich. And Richardson is at the back. He takes the timely mark. Plays on towards Paul Williams. And the Pies are going to get out of trouble. Williams in towards the centre. Finds McDonald. They've got all the space they need. Sam's got to take two of them on. Oh, he got a hand to it too. Seymour will just try and push it along in front of him. He does so, but they're not out of the woods yet. Stafford's taken to the ground. Wider it goes towards Ruse. Osmond charges towards him. Ruse gets the hand pass away, but to no one in particular. Armand is there. He gives the hand pass now. Rocker's loose. They're coming on him now, but Rocker's got it. Big Sam directly in front. And he's going to have a shot. Well, that, that was a great piece of play there. Just in tight inside the contest there. Just have the peace of mind to be able to see Rocker there. Toss it out there. And Stephen Patterson, yep, I think uh, it was a very good piece of work the way he just stepped out and then looked to the right spot in front of goal some 25 metres out. Severio Rocker in his 98th game. Kicking for his second for the night. Oh, he's fired it to the right. Put through a behind. 5-5. That is 2-2. Two, two. Just a bad miss, isn't it, from such a great kick? It is. I mean, and to think, well, that's 37 goals and now 20 behinds. That's not a real good return from a full forward who gets most of his shots from 40, 45 maximum and more often than not dead in front. One course well done, but then... Uh, a wall of Sydney players got him. He back turned and back turned into trouble and they were onto him. And it's going to be a bounce. 35 to 14 here. What this, do you reckon, John? Oh, this one paid as such because Damien Monkhorst had no prior opportunity to dispose of the footy, so when the ball was pinned to him, Greg Scroop had no option but to bounce the footy. Had he had the ball for a bit longer and had an opportunity to dispose of it, well, then he may have been pinged, but certainly not in that situation. Stafford, front spot, Monkhorst, and well done, McDonald, to belt it over the back. Lewis couldn't quite get a handle on it, now tries to go for it, gets a free kick. Hard to turn quickly here tonight, and Lewis uh, kicks out wide, gets to Carey. Geez, promising. Going to be a good player. Inboard confidently to Dyson. Can Dyson get it on in a hurry? Bays wanted to lead. Decides to go directly. Can Locker get into the frame? Chapman, good mark against Burns. Oh, oh gee, this young kid has been flattened a few times. Actually, that was inadvertent, though, Bruce yeah, Richardson. No, I, I, I yeah. didn't mean that. I just, yeah. I meant from his point of view. I saw him two weeks ago. Get, carried from this ground in a really bad way and uh, he's down and out now but all right back yeah. on his feet but he's had a lot of concussion this young boy mm. and uh, well, certainly reckon. there was no no malice no. in any of that but gee he's taken some knocks this kid well i reckon it's a great effort backing back like that dealing with burns and knowing the plug it was coming from beyond <laughs> there's no <laughs> lack no lack of courage no, in, in not Chapman. So that was sensational now he can kick this uh 
35 metres out. This to close it a bit. Sydney coming back. He's hooked though and missed. So Rocker at one end and Chapman at the other. Well, there's, there's, there's a bad miss there from Sydney. I mean, it's their fourth game here at the SCG. They didn't lose a game here right throughout last year. Fremantle, uh, early. Round Fremantle, two. Was it? Early? Yep. Um, but, I mean, it is really their place where they need to make a stand in football and they have these games be ticked down as real wins. They're having some opportunities here now and just letting it slip at a crucial stage early in the second quarter. They have held Collingwood so far in the second term, but they haven't really been able to, to close the gap, and that would be worrying for Rodney Ede as Gavin Brown, who really has come back into his own in season 97, kicks back towards the centre. Shannon's Grant kicked only travels as far as Graham Wright. Stafford could have taken out of there, back to Grant again. Now Dyson towards Maxfield. Didn't get it onto the boot as he would have liked, but it doesn't matter. It finds Johnny Stevens. Stevens just chips up towards Creswell. But they're going the long way home, waiting to set something up. Bays is lurking across half forward. There'll be one of the flyers in this pack. Krasiska belts it clear towards Monkhorst. Sydney still a chance over. Dale Lewis from 52 metres says, I'll do it on my own. And he does. That may just bring them back. And what a sea of red and white there is in this stadium. Lewis has been able to uh, stir the emotions of the crowd and whether the crowd now can reciprocate and get the players up and going. But this is a great piece of work here. Just being able to work at the right spot. Monkers perhaps should have taken, but was keen to keep the ball flowing his way. Lewis steps onto it from well outside 50. A great left foot goal. Collingwood kicked the first four. Sydney have kicked three of the last four. It's 3-3 three, three to 5-5. Five, five. Great goal, Dale Lewis. Outside 50. Moncourse over the top of Stafford. Pushes the ball forward. Here's Lewis in the action. Looking for a free kick. We'll get it. High tackle. Holding a man, Bruce. Sorry, he was uh, actually held while he was over the footy rather than in possession of the footy. So Lewis, defensive side of the centre square. Measures the kick to half or Kelly is a target. There's a number of Sydney players there, including Carey. Chapman ducked his head. Good decision to let it go. Williams around his body. Not as far as Kelly at 53. There's been a big swing in this match in the last five minutes. Kelly... Kicks it hard and high, wants Lockett. Lockett gets rid of Richardson. Richardson's doing all right back there. Russell in the back pocket. Russell then kicks the ball quietly and beautifully to Monkhorst, who belts a handball to Buckley. Buckley has a little bit of time, not as much as he would have liked because he had to wait for his players up forward to make some sort of a move. Francis in towards the centre, only as far as Chapman. Sydney are now coming back into this game. Carey gives a hand pass away. They look down towards Bays. Good spoil on Mark Bays, who came off the bench early in this term. Shannon Grant towards full forward. Lockett is there. O'Loughlin is there. Richardson is there. Brown and Russell and Co. The defence is tight. Carey's under pressure. O'Loughlin, kick a magical goal. Oh, here comes Sydney. No, no, no. going to come back. It's a free kick. It's a free kick, free kick to Collingwood before the kick. Before the kick, so the crowd's certainly not happy with it. 40,000 of them riding it straight through. It's not an, not an unusual sound for an umpire. <laughs> I felt like saying, Russo, you mug a moment yeah. ago when you pulled that one back. <laughs> you wouldn't have heard that ever before, John, would you? <laughs> it was a lovely goal by a lot, but oh. can you spoil a party? <laughs> I think it should stand. Oh, is that happy with it? Oh, golly. On set doing anyway. And with uh, 11 minutes remaining in this first half, Sydney really tightening it up. A 14-point game, and it could have been an 8-point game had it not been for John Russo. Up towards O'Loughlin again. Lockett at the back. Try and shut him up, John. Stephen Carey goes across the face of goal. And a throw in, this time in the left forward pocket for she, Sydney. This Carey, Monker, still is very, very good. And Carey's been the catalyst of, of uh, Sydney coming back into this one. His work in the midfield's been great. We saw earlier Matthew Francis at centre-half forward now for Collingwood. Anthony Rocker still on the bench. Shawville trying to do the work from behind. Has given away a free kick with the, putting the arm over the shoulder. Yep. As so you called it, Sandy. Carey is now going to have a shot. And if you ruin this, you can go home. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. This one will stand. 
There it is there. Yeah. Clearly left arm over the shoulder. And isn't that always, well, not always, but more often the case when a non-specialist ruckman gets in there? Yep. I think even the umpires are watching for it because they know that he's not a specialist. He's going to try and do something he's to gain an advantage here. He's kicked six goals, four for the season. There's a change being made by Sydney too as we speak. It looks as though Cook is going to get his chance with O'Brien coming off. But let's focus our attention on Carey. 25 metres out, almost directly in front. A big kick for Stefan and Sydney, and he's got it. Now we've got a game. Oh, I like it now. I really like it. Uh, Carey's going so well. Uh, we've got Cook now, the, the young rover, young Troy Cook. Second in the uh, Sandow medal last year, into the forward pocket, O'Brien's off. And I think that's going to give a lot more pace to Sydney in the forward line where they need it. Uh, Stafford doing some good work in the ruck there, working very, very tight in against Monkhurst there. Sydney have worked themselves right back in this game so very well. 4-3-5-5, five, five. Anthony Rocker warming up on the interchange. Ruse on Francis for the moment. Sydney coming back hard here. Prince will quick kick out of the centre. Kelly onto it. Wanted to go the big soccer. Just couldn't time it. Shawble held it up cleverly, actually, to Russell, who chips it beautifully to Buckley. They are so smooth when they move, Collingwood. Buckley's kick to Patterson. Good stretch by Patterson. Grant with him and wants it deliberately. Boundary throw in. I'd say Greg Scroop certainly thought about it, but under that sort of pressure, it would be pretty tough to pin Steve uh, Patterson because, um, you know, he was under a lot of pressure and the boundary line was very close. So Brian uh, in the foreground a moment ago on interchange, Moncourse and Stafford. Buckley looking for a free. Patterson works it low to the ground, off the side of the boot, going close to the boundary line. Sydney, no, still in. Bad mistake by the Swans at the back there. Gee. Should have taken it out. Armat in board. Now, getting a good bounce. Is he Dudley? He's taking a while and then gets the kick. Now, Cook's first touch. Can he turn his man inside out? Curran was onto him. Cook quickly kicks the ball to centre wing. Bayes turned his man inside out. Gets a second go. Chapman's got a chance. Give it to Bayes. He's a good kick. He should go. Measure it, Bayes. And drills it through. Oh, it's two points of difference. We have a game. Wasn't that good from Sydney's point of view? Well, that's incredible, isn't it? Here we were watching Scotty Doreen in the back pocket. He didn't run the ball over the boundary line. We all side with against him saying, you did the wrong thing there, son. And the team win it and whip it across through centre-half back, prepared to switch it to the far side of the ground, get the opportunity. Perhaps favoured a little bit. Looked like some of the conditions there, the surface starting to move a little bit. But Bay's on that left. Great work. Lee Walker, you're a little concerned now, me boy. Yeah, uh, Sydney have uh, certainly picked up in the second quarter and, uh, you know, they've probably uh, tightened up on us and uh, sort of shut down uh, Bucks and uh, Willow and that. And, uh, you know... You know, they're still working very hard and uh, hopefully we'll uh, kick a couple in the next couple of minutes, mate. Yeah, it's a great game. Kelly out of the middle. Hope you're enjoying the action on footy's home ground, Channel 7. O'Loughlin inside 50 again. Now this kick could give Sydney the lead. And this is the young man who has made so much difference and has had such an impact. Just 21 years of age. Looks a little bit older than that but uh, has been very good. Stafford's doing well in the centre bounces. What he's doing, he's being prepared to muscle in onto Monkhurst. We have the line across the centre circle that divides the two ruckmans at the initial bounce, but he's quite prepared as soon as it's bounced to step across that line and meet Monkhurst body on body, and that's giving him a real chance. Carey's going to be kicking from just outside the 50. 52 metres. He really goes for the doctor, and in doing so, pulls it to the left. Just how much older does he look from 21, by the way, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I do apologise to Mr and Mrs Carey sitting there in Pennant Hills watching this game. Special comments from Grandpa Wheeler. <laughs> Gavin Krasiska will bring it back into play. A vital eight minutes of this game now, about to unravel. He's gone towards Carey. He couldn't take it, tried to poke it down in front. Only goes as far as Seymour. He wobbles it wide. Now Lewis can take the hand pass here. Dale Lewis goes on to the left foot, and he lets go a bomb, but it's away to the left. That has travelled 65 metres. It's cleared the fence at the back from the edge of the square, and it, that big bomb has tied the scores up.
Back into play once again goes Richardson, this time to the outer side of the ground. There's a mark to Stevens. The youngster plays on because O'Loughlin's alone at half four. What a transformation has come over this game. Tony Lockett quite lucky to get away with shepherding there. He actually, you actually see Lockett here in the uh, bottom of the screen block. Oh, no, it's out. But he certainly uh, blocked Richardson away from contesting that mark with O'Loughlin. It's got to be within five metres of the contest, and uh, I would certainly say that Lockett was much further away than five metres from the ball. O'Loughlin coming into this game had booted nine goals, three. Now, that's a very disappointing kick. 9-4. And one really shouldn't have missed. That's uh, a very costly miss. You can't believe it. 5-6 plays 5-5 with under seven minutes remaining. But Bruce, he hasn't been that real high goal scorer that we've looked for, has he? I mean, he's been a ones and twos man. Um, I don't know what his best would be. Four, is it? You know, and, and, and he wouldn't have got that too often. Against St Kilda this year. Yep. Uh, this year, his best is four yep. in any one match. But he has been a one man. But he was just too careful, wasn't he? Yep. Tried to caress it through. So Collingwood let off the hook with a Carey miss and then an O'Loughlin miss. Oh, no high take. Yeah, it cer certainly looked as though Lewis was interfered with by Brown then. Certainly not coincidental to the marking contest. Grabbed around the neck. Should have been a free kick to Dale Lewis. So let's see if the Maggies can come back here. They trail by behind after they led by 26 at quarter time. Kicked the first four goals in the game. Moncourse got rid of Carey. O'Loughlin's little kick. Tried to cut it off Curran. Kelly was held up. Russell's high ball. It'll stay inside. Lewis has played an inspired 10 minutes. He often does. He can ignite this team, and I think he's been one of the men today who has done just that. Kicks the ball a long way. Kicks to the pocket. Seymour goes down. Oh, good take. Osborne went early, and Seymour's fingers were sticky, and he held on to it. Well, statistically, it doesn't really go with him, does it? I was going to say, what odds are oh, giving us on playing his 49th game? And I've got him down for two career goals. I don't know how many you've got him for, but it wouldn't be too many more. It's hard to kick them from the but, but he has kicked one this year, so he's improving. <laughs> so this could be number two for this year and number three for his career. Sydney doing all the attacking. But he's missed, so it's a behind. So three shots for goal in the last three minutes for three behinds. Admittedly, Kerry was a fair way out. O'Loughlin was a gimme. And Seymour, well, considering his pedigree, perhaps an outsider. But 5-7-5-5, five, 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 two points the difference. It's, it's tough in football. I mean, the momentum just swings, doesn't it? And it's hard to identify in a coaching perspective what it is that's going to turn it back your way. At the moment, Tony Shaw's the one having to do all the work to get it back his way. The Pies have managed just two behind so far for the quarter as Dyson again sends Sydney into attack, this time only as far as Scotty Burns, who has dominated a couple of games so far this season, but certainly hasn't been uh, in that position tonight. Monkhorst on centre wing in front of Lewis. Five and a half minutes remaining in the first half. The big monkey goes towards Severio Rocker, who's come a long way out. Got a hand to it. The Sydney defence through Aruz and Seymour should tidy up. Seymour does eventually, he does it well. Threads his way through some heavy traffic, then goes wide towards Chapman. He's ripped to the ground. Monkos gives it to Brown. Gavin Brown, a high floater to half forward, but again, Stafford holds him up. Oh, this is dangerous by Stafford as he goes to Creswell. Robbie Armat may make him pay here. Armat has a fumble. The ball's very slippery. Graham Wright goes through. He's claimed. And Sydney will get out of trouble for the moment. Dyson's kick goes straight to Russell. Collingwood now landing a charge late in this second quarter. Osborne. Marks inside 50. Has kicked two so far in this game. And can just steady the Collingwood ship. And kick their first goal for the quarter. Well, he's kicked two. He kicked two in the first quarter and uh, really looked had to have a good flow about his approach when he kicked. He should be feeling fairly confident about this, Richard. Going to be kicking from just inside 50. Pushed it right across the face. And a throw in on the left forward pocket. Think back to Rocker's miss. It was five goals to two from 35 metres out straight in front. They haven't got one since. They were going well at that stage. They really were. And uh, 
you know, when he, he lets you down, it's a real tough one to work with. Dyson gives it up. Ooh. Russell, good smother off the boot, though. Back to Williams. Pro. That's free kick to Sydney. So there's a missed chance because Williams was away and is normally very accurate. So 5-7 five, to 5-5 five, five here. Sydney having kicked five of the last six goals and kicked all four goals in this turn. Stevens uses his pace and then delivers to O'Loughlin, who always seems to be able to stretch and take the mark. O'Loughlin comes away, takes one man on, and then delivers out wide. Can Lockett get there? Doesn't need to because Chapman all alone at 45 metres has taken the mark. This will test him. It's about where he kicked from before when he had that free kick, or mark when he hit his head on the ground. Rocker coming off, that's Sav. That's interesting. And Watson coming on. Who would have thought that we'd see both the Rockers on the interchange in the opening half? Now Chapman to stretch the lead for Sydney, he's hooked it again. So they're having pot shots, aren't they, the Swans, and not getting full results. 38 to 35, dominating play, but not the board. And Collingwood, ironically, now being kept in by Sydney's bad kicking after the Woods had dominated early. Four goals, seven. In this quarter, to Sydney Richardson from the back pocket. Goes to the half-back flank. Scheuble to get Collingwood out of trouble. He heads towards centre wing. Now, this is going to be OK. They've got time to score here. Scotty Burns looks down towards left half forward. He didn't look too well, unfortunately, for Collingwood. Roo's hand pass puts his teammate under some pressure, but he's equal to the task. Shannon Grant flicks it long up towards right half forward. Bays has got to beat two or three here, and it's a big ask. Grosisco will do the shepherding. Collingwood will get out of trouble. Back towards centre half back, where the mark is taken by Williams. Collingwood are only going to get a goal now out of some individual brilliance. They've got no system because they're two key men who they would have worked with all year and through all training sessions. The two rockers are on, on the, bench. the bench. Yeah, sure. Kick from Grosisco goes down to half forward. Paul Roos make sure that's where it stays. So, I mean, Tony Shaw, he, he's just trying to pinch one, isn't he, basically? Watson being in at full forward there now. Richard Osmond there alongside in there, the only two inside the 50-metre arc. It'll be a good pinch too, Terry. It'll give them the lead at half-time against the flow here. So, a goal either way will be a bit of a story here if a team can get it. Maxfield, not a lot of touches. That's OK. Kerry's good, isn't he? Kelly had to pull himself up a bit. O'Loughlin's wide if he wants him. Rocket hasn't led properly yet. Now Kerry's going to kick it long to the pocket. They've got numbers, Sydney. Lockett's there. Had a fair bit of it. Richardson, good contest. Play on call. Collingwood had the players in front of the pack and they're able to give it away. But look at this. They can raffle it, Sydney. Stafford's out there. Creswell's going to make a move for him. And Stevens will provide a shepherd. Stafford just strolls around. Touches it on the ground. He's at centre wing. Lumbers across towards half forward. Kicks to full forward. Lock it out number goes early. At the back, Burns. O'Loughlin. Burns has got a bit of time now. On the left. Delivers. Good kick. No pressure, though. Wright's got it at half-back. It's just a flood of magpies in the defensive half at the moment. As you can see now, Graham Wright's got nothing to go to in forward. They're just trying to save that goal there. Wright goes towards centre wing. Chris Siska, Grant. Time ticking away as Creswell heads towards the boundary line. Stevens and Armat. And over. I'm looking at that... Uh, Sydney bench, you think they're in deep trouble, but that's certainly not the case. They've hit back hard in this second quarter. At the moment, having kept Collingwood goalless, restricting them to just two behind. Monkhorst, who's just finished taking Tony Lockett's studs out of his back. He used him as a stepladder just a few minutes ago, all to no avail. He gives it away towards Armat, who looks down towards Watson. Come on, replacing a rocker. They so desperately need a goal to steady the Magpie ship. It's not going to happen at the moment as Lewis tries to shovel it forward. Still inside 50 for Collingwood. Can they take advantage of it? Kelly's in there trying his heart out. Maxfield soccer's off the ground. It's back towards Stevens. He's claimed. Cook bursts his way through. And somehow Good work. gets through. Off to Dyson. Dyson runs into trouble. Tried to take on three or four. And it wasn't a winner. Kelly knocks it clear. Crow is there. His hand pass goes astray. Collingwood still trying desperately to get something going. Wright looks towards McDonald. And he takes the mark. Too far out to score, he needn't bother having a shot at halftime. Big comeback by Sydney. After Collingwood 
Looked so good in the first quarter when they booted five goals three. Tony Lockett hit back with one goal in that second term after being reported and kicking a goal in the first. But it's all set up, Terry, for what should be a classic second half here at the SCG. Oh, without doubt. I mean, the, the scoreline here now, Sydney have worked extremely well to get them back, themselves back into this position. The two coaches and the respective match committees really have to do a lot of work here now. Collingwood trying to re rediscover a structure in their forward line that's going to be able to get them the goals they need. Uh, the Sydney match committee looking to be able to keep a lid on the excitement and enthusiasm that the side will have in there, being able to settle them down and then giving them the constructive instructions to be able to go on out there and continue continue their run on right throughout the centre of the ground. So at half time, it is Sydney leading by three points. 5-8, 38, Collingwood, a 5-5, 35 on Footy's home ground. Channel